all directly to jail again. Either you're cheating or this game is rigged. Hmm? Fine. Dear Tim and Moby, who was Fanny Lou Hamer from Megan? Well, on August 22, 1964, a lot of Americans were asking that same question. That night, they turned on the TV to see Hamer on every news program. She looked like a nice middle-aged lady or somebody's mom or your neighbor. But in her home state of Mississippi, she was well known as a fearless voting rights advocate. For the past two years, she'd been fighting to get African Americans access to the polls. The Constitution said that the right to vote could be denied due to race. But southern states have found sorts of ways but to get around the law. Strip of the right to vote, black southerners have no voice in a racist system to try to fight your face jail time, and intimidation, and violence. Hamer had experienced it all, and that night, she shared her own story. And it was just a, a few minutes long but full of hardship and of brutality. And the viewers who never heard of her before wept. And overnight, she went being from a local activist to a national civil rights leader. Hamer was born in Mississippi in 1917, the youngest of 20 children. Her grandmother had been enslaved. And her parents, like many descendants of enslaved people, were sharecroppers. A plantation owner rented them farmland in exchange for a share of their crops, but he also charged high rates for tools and other expenses. So like most sharecroppers, they were constantly in debt. Hamer had to leave school after sixth grade to help her family in the fields. As an adult, she earned a position of responsibility on a plantation. She recorded each farmer's harvest and tried to get them their fair share. Then, and in August 1962, the members of the Student Nonviolent Coordinating Committee, or SNCC, visited her own church. All around the country, the civil rights movement was heating up, and it's one of its major players. And its students, activists, and local community leaders to join the fight. In Mississippi, they focused on registering black voters. They told the congregation they could sweep out racist officials. Hamer was even stunned. She didn't even know that she had the right to vote. So when they asked for volunteers to register to vote, she raised her hand high. Uh, no, it wasn't even that simple. And an angry crowd gathered at the courthouse to be meeting the 18 volunteers. They tried to scare Hamer and the others from even trying to register. But the volunteers stuck together and made a way in. Inside the courthouse, the clerk was no more welcoming. He demanded a group to pass a test before registering. They were asked to explain a legal clause about the ex facto laws. Exactly, that was the whole point of literacy tests, to be nearly impossible to pass. So clerks can refuse anyone the right to vote. They also demand a poll tax, a fee meant to discourage would-be voters. No surprise, all the SNCC volunteers failed the literacy test. And on the way home, their bus was stopped by the police. It said its yellow color was illegal. Hamer sang a song to keep the group's spirits up until they were let go. That night, she was fired from her job and evicted from her home. The plantation owner had heard about her attempt to register. A few nights later, somebody shot at the house where she was staying. And afraid for her children, Hamer considered leaving town for good. But she could not convince herself but to leave the place that her parents helped build. She rented a house from a neighbor and took a job with a committee. Hamer's home became a gathering place for volunteers and civil rights leaders. And among them, she stood out. She wasn't even male, young, well-educated, or middle class. She knew what poor black families endured because she'd been living it. That first-hand experience made her a powerful speaker. She would often break into song to motivate crowds. Before long, she was well known for her singing voice as her activism. But her growing influence made her a target for racist attacks. She got threatening letters and phone calls, and her husband lost job after job. 
Somebody threw a bomb into her house throw. Luckily, it had failed to explode. Then, and in June 1963, Hamer and six fellow activists were arrested. They tried to eat at a whites only diner. Local police held them for three days, beating and torturing them. Hamer's kidneys were permanently damaged, and she lost sight of one eye. Hamer and other activists realized the legal authorities were not going to change unless they were forced to. So, in 1964, they started a massive border station drive called Freedom Summer, and it brought hundreds of mostly white college students down to Mississippi. They went to door to door registering black voters. It was dangerous work and three volunteers were being dead in the first week. But the nation could no longer ignore what was happening in Mississippi. For the rest of the summer, stories and beatings and shootings made headlines all around the country. And at the end of August, Hamer and other activists went to Atlantic City, New Jersey. That was the site of the Democratic National Convention. The big event in where the party chose its nominee for president. Each day sends a group of people to cast the official vote. No surprise, Mississippi's representatives were all white. Hamer's group was there to challenge their authority. So the state executed black voters, this said the declaration was illegal. They were Mississippi's true representatives and they have voter registrations to prove something. In the protests are causing a lot of noise, Hamer was giving a lot to speak. Before national audience, she described what she had endured simply for trying to vote, being shot and threatened by fellow citizens, being beaten by the police. She challenged the nation to consider for its own values. Hamer, is this America, the land of the free of the home of the brave, where we have to sleep with our telephones off for the hooks, because our lives be threatened daily. Because we want to live in a decent human beings in America. Her testimony replayed on the news for days. Hamer and her group were not seated at the convention. But a year later, President Lyndon Johnson was signed the Voting Rights Act of 1965. And they outlawed all kinds of barriers to voting like literacy tests and poll taxes. And at the convention in 1968, Hamer was chosen to be an official delegate. She received a standing ovation. Hamer's activism continued way past her prime time moment. She fought for women's rights and protested the Vietnam War and ran for opera several times. She founded a Freedom Farm, a cooperative to help black farmers climb out of poverty. Before her death in 1977, she was buried there. Yeah, I guess it is your turn to roll.